uh, from Haywood Jablomi. So, I love you. Haywood Jablomi and Chief Kickabitch is a slap of donation. Can you keep some cool names for the rest of us? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> it's like when we found out that Cappy had a site called Asshole Consulting. I was like, damn it. <laughs> Wish I would have come up with that shit instead. But here we go. Another Chief Kickabitch of the slap of nation story. Everybody sit back, relax, and bone appetit. Mm. Roughly five years after I punched Billy and blackening both of his eyes, he felt like he could take me. Mm. Usually this kind of stuff never goes well. He had filled out and grown balls. Not very big ones, but they were balls. Too bad for him that they were bigger than his brain. Uh, Excuse me. Mm. He was in the public school a few blocks from the Catholic school Charlie and I attended because he sort of washed out in third grade. His parents pulled him out because even with summer school, he would not get promoted to the fourth grade in our school, but he could be promoted at his current school. So he he's, was, he's an idiot. Yeah. He was never more than a C-minus student, so he tried to cheat his way through third grade. You can't get better than a C in third grade? Dude. Tough life. All these things happen. All through third grade, he tried to cheat off of the girl in front of him. She was on to him, and like all girls that age, was very rules-oriented. She also had a crush on Charlie, so given the opportunity to hurt him, she took it. Ah. Rather than rat him out, she did something far worse. Okay. On finals day, she took out two sheets of paper for each test, which were all multiple choice. On the one she let him copy, but pretended to guard against prying eyes, she put down enough wrong answers to fail, but not so many that it would be suspect. A zero would be suspicious. When report cards were mailed out at the start of summer, he had Fs in almost every class. Oh, my God. Damn. One day in late September, when we were in sixth grade, Danny Lyons, a.k.a. Dandy Lyon, one of our friends Billy was now in school with, came over to Charlie's to give us a warning. Billy was trying to get him to help out with a plan to ambush me, and Danny went along with it on the surface. Mm. Danny's role was to be Billy's second to keep Charlie from jumping in. Hmm. Not that Charlie would insult me by even implying that I needed help against a rodent like him. <laughs> the only way he would have taken a hand would have been if I needed a chance to recover after being successfully ambushed. Danny also had too highly developed a sense of self-preservation to try standing against Charlie, who was hell on wheels in a fight. The plan was for Billy to lie and wait for me in the bushes in front of old lady Kelso's house along my route to help, uh, to, along uh, my route to school, and to jump me by surprise. He didn't know three important details. Mm. Danny couldn't stand him. He was our friend since the second grade, and we selected the ambush point. (laughs) (laughs) With advanced notice, Charlie tried to make money on the fight, but not enough bets were placed on Billy to avoid a loss, so he had to announce that all bets on me were off and refund that money. Ah. Not wanting to pass up a sure thing, we personally covered the few bets placed on Billy. Alberto Batista lived next door to old lady Kelso. He did a dated chick named Kelso for a little while, which is one of the reasons why we chose that location for the ambush. We needed a classmate to witness my victory to avoid arguments when collecting on the bet. The other reason was the location and height of the rhododendron near the sidewalk in front of her house was a good place from which to spring on the unwary. We took Danny out for pizza with the proceeds. (laughs) Danny signaled Billy to leap from cover and rush me. But Billy did not know that it was also his signal to me to slow my step for half a second so he would be too early. Ah. Billy came. Billy was coming from the east, and I was heading from south to north. There was a tree in the median strip a couple of feet behind me when Billy sprung. All I had to do was stop and grab his jacket while rotating my body counterclockwise to let his momentum body slam him into the tree. I won without throwing a single punch. Nice. <laughs> I did something very similar in the sixth grade. Yeah, yeah. He was winded as all of the air rushed out of his lungs, and he struggled to suck in his next breath. I stopped to help him straighten up while encouraging him to breathe. When he was able to draw a few ragged breaths, I asked him if he was all right. He nodded that he was, so I punched him right in his left eye, instantly blackening it and followed up by knocking the wind out of him again. Nice. Charlie and I walked on, leaving him doubled over trying to breathe. As we walked on, we heard Danny tell him that he had to run so he would not get a detention for being late for their first class. He got back to us later with the story of what happened next. Billy was late and had not changed since we last saw him. He begged for another chance to avoid detention with his clasped hands. Oh, my God. (laughs) This is the beggar. 
Yep. But at least he no longer went down on his knees. His teacher was a man, so even the black guy couldn't help him sell it. After that, his parents had to pull him out of public school altogether and move him to a different Catholic school. He was getting his ass kicked on the regular after that day. Oh, my God. Damn. Hey, fuck around, find out, and the amount of fucking around is directly correlating to how much you will find out. Yeah. Well, listen, man. What are you going to do? I got picked on pretty hard when I was when I was a young man uh, in school. Yeah. And uh, I actually, on a couple occasions, got a chance to settle up with these people in the real, real world. It's good times. And uh, let, let's just say, uh, without the 50-pound weight advantage they had while I was in school, they were nothing. It's good times, man. I walked through them like a daydream. Sorry, Pop. <laughs> God damn it! I was drinking. <laughs> I waited for that specific moment. God damn it! You're welcome, Alucard. <laughs> you bastards. I mean, if you're going to ask me for that, I'm going to try to whip it on you at a, at a very, very appropriate time. That sounded terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> yeah, phrasing. 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 Boom. Nailed it. Phrasing. Okay. <laughs> Watch Grunt Speak Live every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And if you want to join Pop for Supporter Sundays, go to redonculus.com slash donate and make a monthly pledge. A link is in the Meat Gazer box. 